Hello. We are to making entertainment podcasts for you today. Pull up a wooden chair that uh, you made with own hands, yes. It's such entertainment for you. You listen with ears that are on head. I am Mick David Stecco. I am Do David Flora. And this is... <laughs> Blurry Photos! photos. Da, take a drink of vodka every time someone say blurry photos. <laughs> blurry <laughs> photos. Oh, two drinks for you. <laughs> Vampire rush. I know, no. Uh, that, that did it. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Hi, weary traveler. You've stumbled upon uh, the podcasts of mm-hmm. uh, the ages. That's right. Just You've, nobody knows about it. You made it through the twirly whirly hollow earth. All the way through the the wastelands of the apocalypse. Yep, you even survived Krampus. All of these things have brought you to this. The new year! Yay! Good for you, and Mm -hmm. happy 2013. Right, you did it. And now that we've dated ourselves, how's it going? Going all right? Hey. Hey. Hey, buddy. What you thinking? I'm just kidding, I can't hear you. Don't answer that. Yeah. It'll it'll get weird in here real quick. Real quick. So this week, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but we were affecting jaunty Russian accents at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And um, I know what you're thinking. Oh, you guys must be talking about the uh, Tunguska event, the Siberian explosion. Wrong! 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 Surely, surely then we're talking about Dyatlov Pass. Oh, no. No, we're not. No, no, we're not talking about that either. Sputnik? Mm, no, sorry. Lots of, lots of dead Russians in space. No. Oh, oh, oh. Do you think maybe like the uh, rumors of Chernobyl mutants? No, no, no not oh. that. How about Yetis in the? Uh, si- okay, we're talking about Rasputin. That's right, Grigory Rasputin. Apparently, Russia has a lot of stuff with it. I know. I'm. I'm got to make notes of everything we just said. <laughs> I was kind of surprised we kept it going. Oh, no. We just shafted ourselves because all these people are like, oh, yeah, I can't. Yeah. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, how, oh, really? Oh. No, no. <laughs> now we're just listening about right. Rasputin. What's so good about him? <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <laughs> maybe maybe you do know about him. Maybe you don't. Yeah. Uh, chances are, though, you've heard the name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but you're not sure what all this cat's about. Yeah, what's all the buzz about? All the hullabaloo surrounding this Rasputin rascal. He's a he's a pretty interesting guy. Yep. There's a lot of controversy going on with with him. Now, <laughs> a lot of it, uh, as w- as we'll go through here in this episode, will uh, it'll be like word jazz inside your brain, man. You just gotta feel it. <laughs> Ta-ta. Ooh, we'll be we'll be discussing how uh, exaggerated <laughs> it is. The, yeah, you know the stuff about him. How much stuff was true? How much stuff maybe wasn't true? Who knows? But to begin with, Rasputin was a Russian mystic and a man of God. Yep, or one of history's biggest religious charlatans. Could have been one or the other. <laughs> Did it have to be one or the other? Could mm. it be both? Well, if you're a religious charlatan, you're a man of God and a and a jag. Maybe maybe I'm just editorializing here. I'm just saying I don't feel like the two are mutually exclusive. Could could be could be the same thing. He was a Siberian peasant who became the closest advisor to the Tsar and the Tsarina before the Bolshevik Revolution in yep. the early 1900s. Now, he was a purported psychic and healer. Yeah. And uh, uh, a visionary, so he said. <laughs> Uh, he was also a purported alcoholic, sex fiend, and the devil. <laughs> Russian! <Yeah. laughs> see, now, here's... I I see a lot of Aleister Crowley. Oh. Pronounced Crowley. You're, you're, going, yeah, you're going there You're going there pretty early, and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I, Crowley, I, Crowley's got his uh, wang and all this stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He is stirring the chili with his junk. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if that really applies, but I wanted to say it out loud. Uh, but yeah, th- this is this is what happens when you're Russian and you still want to get into weird shit. Yeah, if you don't, if 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 mummy and papa haven't created this gigantic industrial supply company for you to plunder, and you don't have weird secret societies to hang out in, you're like, F- it, I'm just gonna go to church and get weird with that. Yeah, is that good enough for you? I'm gonna make up my own rules about religion, <laughs> <laughs> and there's still plenty of room for the ladies. <laughs> uh, so. Maybe we'll we'll uh, find out at the end of this episode if he was for real 
uh, or if he's is just a legend and, and yeah. truly a, a really evil dude. Yeah, it, it's, but regardless, he is fascinating and 100% worthy of, of an exploration. Oh, sure. The I, finest I the internet agree. can provide. <laughs> So, uh, let's, let's talk about his early life. Yeah. How about it? Uh, he was born Grigory Yefimovich Rasputin. And that's, uh, he was born January 22nd, 1869, <laughs> in uh, the Siberian village of Pakrovsky. Uh, that's uh, Siberia, of course, being yep. the vast, empty... Worst place on earth. Boring, cold place in, yeah. in in Russia. And no offense to to you know any any of our Russian friends or, or listeners, our but Siberian friends. Siberia, yeah. Apparently, you know just... you're living. You know you live in a rough spot. You know that. You don't. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I think that you're right now nodding to yourself, going, "They get it." Da da. da. They know da it's not true. fun place to be. <laughs> Only thing to do is look at horses and drink. He's, he's winter, he's dying outside, he's summer, he's, he's dying, dying outside, outside, he's mosquitoes. <laughs> His uh, winter mosquitoes are worst. <laughs> <laughs> they probably do have snow mosquitoes there. By the, by the way, uh, we're going to be doing this a lot this yeah, episode, sorry. unfortunately. Uh, that's, that's, that's what we got with this one. Um, Happy New Year. <laughs> so, as a teenager, apparently he was a, a big drunk, he was a thief, a womanizer. He also apparently led a gang and was even paid by a priest to stay away from church services in this gang. You know you are ahead of the curve. You know you are winning when a priest is paying you to stay away. Yeah. Oh, that is that is as cool as it gets. When you're when you're an anti establishment guy with your own street gang, it's you win. Yeah. That's yeah. it. When you get paid to not cause trouble, it's like Halloween yeah. every day. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so he exhibited signs of spirituality uh, around this time, apparently being able to calm horses by just talking to them and uh, heal them by touch. So he was a horse whisperer. <laughs> That's brilliant. How crazy, huh? He also apparently had uh, visions of divine forces, and and uh, I'm going to put quotes around divine forces. Oh, okay. And uh, glimpses of the future. So uh, at this time, now... Granted, this was him saying most of the stuff about himself, mm -hmm. but uh, he convinced people that this stuff was was real uh, because of of some you know a few things that he was able to either predict or or uh, tell. Uh, and one of those was he heard his father once talking about a horse that was stolen from him, and uh, Rasputin went directly to the thief that stole it and uh, pointed him out and everybody in the town was like ha 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 Rasputin what an idiot you know this this guy does nothing he you know he, he's such lazy he's <laughs> uh, saying you know just laughing him off but a couple people followed that guy home and found the horse there so it was proved that he was correct and so everybody was like wah Rasputin he, oh my gosh he knows how to tell the future yeah, he and he, you know, especially at this you know, time in his life, he's a teenager. He's out there. He's making his name for himself. And uh, one of the one of the weird, who's you know, who knows what actually happens of history, mm -hmm. goes from being paid to stay away from church to becoming very involved in it. Oh yeah, spends three months at the the Ver oh boy oh. Verkotyr Verkotyr yeah. Monastery. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not. I Russian. think it's Verkotyr. Yeah. Something like that. Now, here's the thing, though. It's like saying you got sent to management training, but you actually got sent to anger management training. <laughs> well, it's he may have gone of his own volition. Maybe he got sentenced there because he stole a bunch of shit. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, nobody knows. Uh, it was either, yeah, it was either penance uh, for, for this theft or uh, um, a refuge. Yeah, or it could just, that could have been his spin on it. Because yeah. what if his what if his old gang finds out? Hey Rasputin, we heard you've been hanging out with them sissy uh, ass No, monks. no, I'm not hanging uh, out with. I am am uh, roughing up. Am am roughing in face of monks. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. I go there because they're like, oh Rasputin, you're such bad man. You must come here to monastery. I'm like, you are such sissies. I stay with you to prove I am man. <laughs> Jesus, oh, we, we really, we really, we might have to knock that. 
so far I'm enjoying the ride. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So uh, yeah, so who knows why he went? Maybe he told everybody, "Oh, because I was stealing too much." Yeah, I don't know, but he did. He he did set out on this path of religious involvement. <laughs> and that was early. yeah. He was around eighteen or nineteen when uh, yeah when that happened. A, a little bit before that, he, he had two siblings growing up. Maria, who was epileptic, uh, drowned in a river. And Dimitri, uh, who fell in a pond and then soon after that died of pneumonia, and those uh, affected him quite a bit, apparently. Yeah, that will that will uh, that's going to leave a mark. Yeah, it, that that reminds me a little bit of uh, Mr. Tesla. Yep. That you know, I think the same thing happened to him with his brother. And uh, Crowley, Crowley's father died when he was uh, what eleven or something yeah. like that. So you know that that kind of. I don't know if that messed him up or or if he was just like, yeah, I get money now. <laughs> I don't know how he felt about that, know. but but we're we're gonna draw, we're we're gonna take some strings on the cork board and, and right. connect them to different pictures here for you. The cork board of madness. <laughs> so yeah, after he went to Verkhaturya Monastery, <laughs> Verkhatur- <laughs> yeah, that one's that one's the toughest name we're gonna come across. I I bet you. Um, <laughs> now. While he was in there, he did claim to see a, a, a vision of the Virgin Mary. Oh yeah, and and from from that day forward, he considered himself a uh, a religious man. He That's was right. from that day forward, he was like a mix between like Joel Osteen and Bruce Banner. He was just gonna like <laughs> just wander the lonely roads, hoping not to Hulk out, and also uh, praying and bringing God to the people. <laughs> <laughs> he also he also met a holy man named Makari, yeah, uh, who had advised Tsar Nicholas II and the Tsarina Alexandra uh, earlier in his career. And uh, Makari apparently had a huge influence on him because Makari was kind of a, a wandering holy man at the time. There's nothing that a young wandering holy man likes more than an old ho- wandering holy man. <laughs> Yeah, he kind of, I think, set the tone for for what Rasputin would uh, become later. Yeah. He's like, I like this guy. I, I like the guy. I like he's, his this style. good guy. He's, he's, he's a, out there. He's doing it. Uh, he's he doing it. Smells a little like uh, a bear claws in <laughs> in hot summer mosquito weather. He's uh, like a piece from little dog. He smells. <laughs> he smells. But it's good guy. He's but good it's good guy. guy. Oh, so um, he. He may have also uh, come in contact, and this is not, of course, confirmed, but it's very highly suspected, uh, with a, a banned Christian sect known as the Cleisti. Oh, yeah. Who uh, <laughs> danced them. The, the Cleisti means uh, f- the flagellants. They're mm-hmm. kind of these types that would, you know, beat themselves and, and yeah. uh, f- forgive themselves. Uh, they weren't all. Um uh, albinos, as the no. media would have you believe. No, no, screw that. Some Illuminati. of them were quite swarthy, <laughs> uh, and apparently they they danced themselves into fervors and uh, ended services in physical exhaustion. And some rumors were spread that they even achieved this exhaustion through orgies after this dancing. And mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. Uh, uh, besides the orgies, kind of sounds like the the Sufi dancers. Uh, yeah. In, uh, the the whirling Morocco dervishes, and, yeah, the whirling dervishes, things like that, and so the orgies sound like the seventies. So, so, so they were ahead of their time. So, I think no, not ahead of his time. They were I believe him time. to be a time traveler. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just throwing some more stuff on the pile. Yeah, now. yeah, that's fine. We'll sort through it later. And and keep in mind, this is Siberia, not a lot going on. Right. So I imagine people are gonna say whatever pops into their heads, and <laughs> I know whenever I'm looking to slander a person, the first thing I go to is orgy accusation oh sure because what are they gonna say oh no i've never had no. amazing group sex no. no they can't they have to own it <laughs> no i have uh, no or, i'm not gonna i, I or, started they, too, or they've jinxed themselves from it <laughs> you know so you yeah that's a great so try it out at the office <laughs> accuse co-workers of having mind-blowing group sex <laughs> they'll just have to own it <laughs> yeah i learned that trick from rasputin <laughs> Uh, so returning to Pokrovsky, he married Praskovia Fyodorovna Dubrovina in 1889. <laughs> this is just that was one person, just one yeah, person, just one. That's that's where the orgy rumors Praskovia. came from. Yeah, 
And uh, and he had three children with her. Mm -hmm. And apparently he also had another child with another woman. What? Who shall not be named, I guess. Yeah. Couldn't find the Lost to history. Oh, well. But he left the village in uh, in 1901 to wander as a stranic or pilgrim, mm -hmm. and he walked all the way to Jerusalem and Greece, and he just lived off the donations of people that, that he helped along the way and healed, and uh, he also told fortunes to make money. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, that is, I'll, I will say that I find that the most amazing thing about Rasputin. Yeah. A, because I believe it. And B, that's just a hell of a thing. He walked from Siberia to Jerusalem. Right. Walk. Shamon. Now, yeah, this is this is uh, walking. I mean, this is when, you know, people people aren't going to give you a ride if there even are people to give rides in that part of the, the world. And uh, apparently he didn't bathe. He didn't change his clothes. He smelled terrible. Per yeah. Well, that's a long walk. Or if you're a holy man... Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Smelled great. But uh, when he came back, people definitely noticed uh, some kind of change in him. He he had some sort of religious essence about him. He he really people really believed this. Now the the big thing with Rasputin uh, was his eyes. People were just mesmerized by by these deep set eyes, and apparently they were real light blue and. And just uh, uh, people completely got drawn into them and almost hypnotized immediately by them. He claimed to be a higher being uh, after he came back from his journey. Well, I don't blame him for that. He earned it. Yes, <laughs> higher being granted. And um, it, it was around this time uh, uh, he uh, he saw another vision that, that told him to go to St. Petersburg, uh, which was the, the seat of the Russian Empire at the time. And this was around 1903. So word had reached St. Petersburg already about uh, about him and uh, the mystical stuff that was going on at the time, the occult, seances, mediums, things like that. That was all the rage in uh, the aristocracy at the time. People were going nuts over over mystics and fortune tellers and you know the the people that were talking to the dead. So this was kind of a, uh, a perfect storm of, of stuff that that culminated. And, well, and he's got massive street cred. Now, while you were just speaking, I just tried to Google Map from oh. Pokrovskoye to Jerusalem. And Google's like, nope, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I think you can even do, like, uh, how to drive from New York to London. I think it even tells you how to do that, and it yeah. doesn't tell you how to it, you walk. Can't, yeah, it won't tell you how to <laughs> walk. Bus or car, it, you can't, it will not calculate a path between those two places. But just looking at the map, uh, let's see, you go through Kazakhstan, uh, depending on which way around the Caspian Sea, <laughs> you either go through Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and Iran. Let's assume he didn't do that. Yeah. Then that means that you go through uh, Russia down through Kazakhstan, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Syria, Jordan, Israel. I mean, come on. Walking. Walking! Yeah. Walking. That is mind-blowing. Yeah. I mean, that'll change a person. Yeah. I can't I, see how it won't. Right. And he, I kind of want to do it myself. Yeah. If he wasn't crazy when he started, he's crazy at the end of it. Where should we walk to? Like, if we started in Chicago. Okay. We'd go Our to what? Uh, Machu Picchu? I just want to know what the distance between the two is. You keep looking at that. I'm, I'm gonna. So, anyways... Uh, Rasputin made, met a bishop named Hermogen, who was impressed by his healing abilities, apparently. Uh, he, Rasputin would, would lay on hands for people, and, and uh, they would claim, yes, my headache is gone, or my, my arthritis is, is gone, I can, I can move again. And, and a lot of people, apparently a lot of people believed this enough, or, you know, it actually happened, that he was getting very... Uh, like you said, this massive street cred built. And so he started entertaining aristocrats in the salons for a while in uh, St. Petersburg, but with doing his healing and doing his uh, fortune telling, things like that. And, of course, he was still just, like, shaggy. Uh, I, I should mention he, um, he, had a, uh, he had long black hair, which he parted in the middle, and it was greasy, nasty. He had a, a, a long, shaggy black beard, which had like last week's 
lunch there was still a, there stuck was, in yeah, there. He, there, there was, was like a, a Kaiser roll that he refused to eat that just lived in his beard. Right. And that, I made that up. I'm <laughs> sorry. But you can believe it about, about him. He had just dark features, wore black peasant's clothes, and smelt like a goat, everybody said. Ugh. And if you've ever smelled a goat, you know the smell. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and and even if you you know Google uh, images of him or or pull up any any information about him, there are a lot of pictures uh, of him for one thing. And he does, man. He looks like this just wicked looking guy. You know, it, it looks like the type when when you say like uh, either Antichrist or Satan worshiper. Yeah. This this picture. <laughs> Or, Could be up there, you yeah, know. He is he is a haunting looking guy. He kind of reminds me of like uh, uh, Charles Manson, in yeah, a way, in in some of his uh, the way he looks. Uh, but anyway, he had this going for him, and 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 he embraced this look. And the aristocrats just ate it up because you know they're all they're living in opulence, and for for this goat smelling peasant to walk in there and, and entertain them. It was like, oh, yes, dance monkey. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. They're so delightfully filthy. <laughs> oh my gosh, smells like last week's garbage, which I won't get anywhere near. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I think I'd rather hear the Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the variety. <laughs> now, let's, uh, let's get to when he was introduced to... Tsar Nicholas II and this is where Alexander. We're, now we're picking up some steam here. Now, in 1905, he was introduced to them. Uh, Alexandria had a son, Alexei, who had hemophilia, mm-hmm. which is a, a condition where the, the blood doesn't clot, uh, which means any small injury could be fatal. Made famous by inbreeding in Europe. Mm-hmm. They want to keep that aristocratic line going. That's right. <laughs> keep that blue, thin, unclotting <laughs> blood flowing. So uh, there was a there was a time when Alexei had a bad accident, and he was he was bleeding, mm-hmm. uh, whether it be uh, internally or externally. He he was in a bad way. Uh, Rasputin walked into the the palace basically and was like, "Let What's me." What's all this, sir? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> You got a little bugger who's bleeding to death. <laughs> let's, let's see what we can do. Um, <laughs> that's how he changed. Yeah. He changed uh, to that's to, how to he, he was crazy. Uh, no, but he walked in the palace and, and he just uh, he asked to pray over Alexei's body. Uh, not that the kid was dead. He just wanted to to pray over him. And to the onlookers, he seemed to know what was going on. Which was a big deal because they kept this hemophilia a secret as best they could because right. they didn't, you know, this was the only heir to the throne. They didn't want the Russian public to be in an uh, uproar because, you know. And it's never a good idea for people to know that you can assassinate the head of the nation with a paper cut. <laughs> right. Right. Or just like throw a throw a beer can against him. And, <laughs> Ow, bruise. Yeah, dead. you could poke him with a pillow and it would kill him. So he asked to pray over him. Alexei was bleeding. Uh, Rasputin was able to stop Alexei's bleeding, apparently. Somehow, mystically. Somehow. And people to this day debate on, on how he did this. Was it some kind of mystical healing ability? Uh, was it hypnosis? A lot of people said that uh, you know he was able, with those eyes, to just hypnotize people. And, and uh, was it uh, saying no more aspirin? Because aspirin was a new thing that was invented, and uh, mm-hmm. all the doctors were like, this is a miracle drug. Give it to everybody for everything. Uh, but aspirin is a blood thinner, yep. uh, which would just exacerbate the problem. And, and and it could have been him saying, nope, no more aspirin. Just let him rest. Uh, or it could have just been he was a calming influence and just calmed him down and let, let the boy's body you know take care of itself. Nobody knows for, for real. But he was able to continue curing uh, Alexei of, of bleeding and, and making things okay for many years. And this just completely endeared him and earned uh, uh, the trust of Alexandra, yeah, the, the mother, the Tsarina. That's basically when all hell started to break loose. <laughs> yeah, he once, yeah he'd, he, once he had established the trust with the family, now he's an advisor, and anyone in the Russian government at that time had to have been made very nervous by this absolute lunatic. 
who is now seen shuffling through the hallways, muttering to himself, healing people, whether they like it or not. Right. And at this time, don't forget, he is not done with the group sex. <laughs> yeah. This is this is all going on, and, and yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're about to blow the doors wide open on, on the, the sexy stuff. So by, get comfy. By 19, Light a candle. <laughs> by 1912, uh, he was visiting the royal palace at will. Without invitation, just showing up willy and, nilly. Um, <laughs> willy nilly, and he was referring to the czars as mama and papa. This is the this is how in with them he was. Creeper. Now, to his credit, I think Czar Nicholas the Second wasn't a big fan of him, but Tsarina was such a huge fan, and she had such influence over Nicholas that he basically had to go along with you know what. What she wanted and what yeah. Rasputin said. Now, apparently, he used his fame and his abilities you know, <laughs> uh, to administer healing and forgiveness, particularly to women and particularly to through, their genitals. Yeah, to their <laughs> genitals. Uh, and this is, this is great. He thought that sexual contact with women healed them. His sexual contact with women healed them. He believed this. He's brilliant. He also believed in sinning greatly, so the forgiveness was greater, uh, bringing everyone closer to God. And uh, sexual sin was eh, the easiest. Oh my gosh! I, I, I've, he's won me over. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna. Uh, I, I mean, he was at this point. He was. Pretty much pansexual. <laughs> That's like eating a birthday cake before you start your diet. Yeah. But over and over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. And the birthday cake is sex. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. It's like, I, I will not uh, commit the, any more sins. Yeah. I will be completely washed clean. But I've got to really do it up before I know true forgiveness. Yeah, but that means that he's like, no, I'm not going to eat some cookies. If I can't eat five boxes of cookies, I'm not eating any. It's about big sin here, people. Yeah. He doesn't write bad checks. He just robs banks. <laughs> he would uh, hold religious gatherings and services at his uh, uh, apartment and take the girls in a back room and um, uh, help them sin and then forgive them. Brilliant. And by that, I mean rape them. Oh, wah, wah. you just tricked me. Sorry. You totally tricked me. <laughs> now I sound like you I'm see, pro rapist. and I'm he, not. <laughs> You see how uh, uh, labels can can change it. <laughs> Damn it! I thought that everyone was all into it. He had a he had a big interest in prostitutes too. Well, they were into it or the money, but man, now it sounds like I was high fiving a rapist. <laughs> I am no longer a part of his ecumenical teachings, and I'm outside of his congregation. Now, some people began seeing his life as nothing but debauchery. Hermogen, uh, the guy that introduced him to the, to yeah. the czar, and a, a fellow cleric named Iliador accused him of using the power of the devil to do all this madness. And one day they, they cornered him and beat him. Of course, what's Rasputin do but run straight to Alexandra and tell her all about it? <laughs> and then they, they hit me and said that I was working with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> and so yep. she she banished them, banished them from St. Petersburg. Oh, that uh, that didn't sit too well with uh, Iliador. Yeah. Um, and in 1914, Rasputin was visiting his wife and his family because you know yeah. oh, this is going on, but he's still family he's still married. man. Uh, he was visiting them in Pokrovsky. He was attacked by a woman who was a former prostitute and uh, a victim of his named Zinya Guseva. Uh, and she was at this time a disciple of Iliador's. So he, he kind of like, oh. was trying to get his revenge uh -huh. through her. She stabbed Rasputin in the abdomen. And by all accounts, she basically gutted him. Like he, he had entrails hanging out. This was how Whoa. bad she, she got him. And... He had uh, immediate surgery performed and survived. They stuffed his, his guts back in him, sewed him up. and Which, especially at that time and his general right. habits of hygiene. And alcoholism. He's still... Million to one against him coming out of that. Right. 
So, I mean, and that added, you know, fuel to the the fire of like this guy's little more than human or right. something. Yeah, and yeah, let's let's just call that the first point on the uh, Rasputin is a semi immortal. That's right. the ding. The scoreboard. We're now keeping track. Now it was just like a few hours after this happened, the Archduke Ferdinand was shot, and the uh, it basically World War One. Yeah, just started. In torn. Just started. It did. Uh, it seemed to others that after after he recovered from this, he was a little bit changed. <laughs> uh, again. Yeah, and I'm going to have uh, maybe less, not so much the sex to prostitutes, make not the raping so much. <laughs> it's make me feel stabby. <laughs> yeah, a knife to the gut will change a man's perspective. <laughs> By this time, as we as we mentioned, he had immense influence over Alexandria, the Tsarina. He could uh, he could make or break people in politics and uh, positions of authority mm-hmm. just just by giving her the word. In 1915, Rasputin wanted to go to the front lines of the Russian army and bless the troops. And uh, Tsar Nicholas II said, um, "If you go there, I'm going to hang you." You are going to be uh, hanged. It, really? Yeah. I would have thought he would have been like, yeah, front lines, go get them. I mean, Bless them all. Uh, it, the czar wasn't, wasn't the brightest uh, uh, yeah. poppy in the, in the opium field. <laughs> that, a, that was brilliant. Is that all right? Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> Poppies are bright. <laughs> but he... So that's, here's the takeaway. Poppies are bright. <laughs> what you should know. Um, so yeah, he didn't, he didn't want him to go there. He, he was like, if you, if you do this, because he didn't like him, he thought he was a fake and, and thought it was just weird, but, uh, that didn't sit too well with old, uh, Rasputin, uh, yeah. apparently right after that, he had a vision saying that the army wouldn't succeed unless the czar himself took over the forces. So that somebody's going to the front line in this house. That sent old Nicholas II straight out. To take charge, uh, doing it firsthand. Yeah, uh, which left Alexandra in charge, meaning it left Rasputin in charge. Yeah. He oversaw the appointment of four prime ministers, four war ministers, and six ministers of the interior in the in the year or so after he took over. A lot of turnover. A lot of turnover. Now between this and the declining economy. The disastrous war that was going on, uh, by by the end of it, they had like 4 million Russians uh, die in this Yeah, thing. that's how Russia just never loses, because they just never stop throwing people. But also how they never win. Because yeah, they they don't, don't have... yeah, no one ever called Russia a big winning army. <laughs> and uh, uh, rumors of an affair between Rasputin and Alexandra, because he was always... Yeah, you know, I've been, always I've been waiting for this to come up, because... And yeah. uh, and the manipulation that he was obviously uh, doing, it made him kind of an unpopular figure in many circles in uh, in Russia. I'm amazed that it's just kind of unpopular. <laughs> and uh, still, uh, people were you know he was just more and more going out having these these orgies, having the you know these these parties, sex, and and getting drunk and just living in this this opulence that the meanwhile people were paying. You know, four times what they used to pay for for just a loaf of bread, and they were doing everything they could not to starve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the, I did hear this uh, one account that one time he ran to a, a palace balcony naked and uh, just started swinging his wang around, saying, "This is what rules Russia." <laughs> <laughs> he helicoptered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see. You know what? It's so hard not to love this guy. <laughs> so, now we come to uh, a little dandy fop mm-hmm. named Felix Yusupov. Yeah. Who got caught up in the anti-Rasputin fervor. Yusupov was rich, he was handsome, he was bisexual, yep. and he was determined to save the Russian royal dynasty. So he gathered a small group of nobles together uh, to hatch an assassination plot. Because they believed that Rasputin was uh, what was causing Russia to go down the toilet. Mm-hmm. 
Now, along with the Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlovich and the, the politician Vladimir Perishkovich, Yusupov lured Rasputin one night to his palace, to, to Yusupov's palace, mm-hmm. with the prospect of meeting, air quotes, his alluring wife, Irina. Now, fun fact that they don't tell you in the history class books is that the written invitation spelled M- meeting M-E-A-T-I-N-G. <laughs> Wink! Wink! <laughs> know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> now, what happened next is all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's mostly because the details of it came from Yusupov himself, and some of them came from autopsies later. Yeah. Uh, some much, much later. Much, much later. And and there's all kinds of accounts of the murder of Rasputin. So, the classic version goes like this. Rasputin was fed small cakes and wine, which were laced with cyanide. And I mean laced, like in friggin' shoe laced. They're like... <laughs> Like, Enough. This wine tastes awfully cyanide. Why is it so <laughs> thick and paste-like? Right, right. I mean, this is laced like a bodice. Yeah, this is laced like okay, um, <laughs> like really it, big, tall hiking boots. <laughs> this like is those, laced like a goth girl's wet dream. <laughs> like the like those giant, stupid Chuck Taylors that the kids that hang out at the skate park wear. Uh, oh boy! That was apparently, it was enough cyanide to kill like five men. Mm-hmm. He and he ate uh, ate the cakes and drank the wine. And hours passed, and he sat there, being like, "Where is Arena?" That is awesome because that is a very awkward amount of time. And you know, occasionally everyone's just making small talk, and then they forget. Oh, we just poisoned the shit out of him. <laughs> and then and then it would come back to like, "Oh my god." He's still here. Yeah, what, what is going on? What is taking so long? That is a good joke, Rasputin. <laughs> <gasps> so, uh, after, after a while of this, him just sitting there being full of poison and not dying, uh, Yusupov decides enough's enough, and he runs and gets a gun, comes back, shoots him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which is another great part of the dinner part. Yeah. Everyone's just, yeah, I was, I was going to... Maybe go on a trip this spring, and then finally you just gets up and walks out. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? Eh? <laughs> you can hear him jump, 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 <laughs> click, 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 jump, 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 raspberry. Oh, bang! <laughs> Man, we're gonna have to do. Maybe, maybe we'll uh, have another podcast that's just radio plays of of, of, <laughs> of assassinations. <laughs> Dramatic uh, reenactments. We'll put together a YouTube uh, channel. Yeah, we'll audio. put the podcast up, but we'll also do yeah. dramatic reenactments. Oh, absolutely. That's what people want to see. <laughs> so Rasputin crumbles to the floor, and Yusupov uh, goes upstairs to where the, the Grand Duke and, and the other fop are, are waiting, and, and they all celebrate. Oh, what a good job we did. Yeah. Uh, Meanwhile, this... they don't know Rasputin's downstairs just banging out push-ups, because he doesn't <laughs> give a f- <laughs> Yusupov comes back to check on him a little while later. He goes over, you know, does the old classic uh, shake the body, see if he's alive. Rasputin, Friday the 13th style, eyes fly open and his hands grab Yusupov's neck and start (laughs) strangling him. (laughs) This is great. He breaks free and he he runs out and escapes into the courtyard. Uh, this is Rasputin yeah. who's, who's doing this. He's trying to get out of this, this palatial uh, estate. The All the conspirators chase after him. Everybody grabs their gun, their revolver. They shoot him two more times as he's trying to leave. Still doesn't do anything. He's crawling away. He's trying to get through the gates. So they, they run over to him and they beat him with a rubber club until he's he's subdued. And by some accounts, they severed his penis. What? At this time, they're like, surely he's dead. This is this has got you know he's he's got to be dead. Apparently, he was not though. They wrap him up in a in a carpet or a blanket or something. Uh-huh. They wrap him up, tie him up. They drive out to the Nevo River and they drop his ass in there. Mm-hmm. And then they then they drive home and and all celebrate uh, with uncyanided cakes. <laughs> which again very awkward 
Everyone just holding the cake. <laughs> yeah. Coughing quietly. <laughs> Watching everyone else. Uh, so it was a good time, no? Oh, you, <clears throat> yeah, no, no, you eat your cake. I'll tell the story. I'll tell my tale first. You eat, uh, you uh, eat uh, that cake first. I, I, I have no appetite. Oh, uh, did you see how much his penis stump was bleeding? Oh. I'm not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, uh... <laughs> Well, I'm going home. Yeah, that's what done. Yeah, my mistake. I should not have mentioned the stump. Uh, we were doing good until <laughs> stump was mentioned. Uh. <laughs> so, um, a couple days later, the body washes up. They were hoping it was going to be taken out to sea. Nope, the body washes up, and when it washed up, they discovered the arms were free of this this blanket and mm-hmm. the, and the ties and the ropes. And uh, apparently he had water in his lungs, meaning he drowned. After all that stuff, he dies of of drowning and possibly hypothermia. (laughs) Not the beating, not the penis severing, not the shooting. Not the poisoning. (laughs) Not the poisoning. So, that's, yeah, that's how he dies. That's how he comes to uh, uh, an amazing end after an amazing life. Yeah. Uh, What's more, now, now... that's like I said. That's the classic uh, way of how he bit it. People... Which I will I will replace the word classic with fun. <laughs> that sure. was the that's the fun version. What, well, there's I think there's another version that's that's equally as fun, involving the British Secret Service. Yeah, th- what a cool angle that is! Right, handgun forensics. <laughs> so uh, they there's a picture. You can even find this on on the old interwebs. Mm-hmm. There's a picture. He's got a, a bullet wound in his forehead. Yeah, like front and center. That's how you kill a guy. And not, this was not in any of the testimony of, of any of the uh, conspirators in there, yeah. which leads a lot of people to be like, okay, this this dandy fop is just trying to make himself look sexy. He's trying to make the story bigger than it is. You know, this is not what happened. Which is weird because if I was going to make up a story about an assassination, in my version, everything would go according to plan. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he was poisoned in the yeah, story. No, we made some cakes. He ate them. And uh, that was pretty much it. No, nothing else happened. I don't know why you would have seen me running through the streets carrying that gigantic bundle. Penis. Yeah, that oh. penis in one hand, bundle in the other. <laughs> no, none of those things happened. Everything I planned came out exactly the right way. So it is weird that he would fabricate like this gigantic comedy of errors. Right. Like ridiculous. Well, he Hollywoodized it. Yeah. You know, he just made it like Die Hard. <laughs> Rasputin was played uh, by Alan Rickman, which he was in the 1996 movie. Yep, and he was Hans Gruber. Yeah, he just he would not die. So it's and and so some of the fun facts is that they did review the autopsies. I mean, they've they've right. re- everyone takes a crack at, at Rasputin's autopsy. It's like ha- the thing you check off in medical school. It's right. like a, a requirement. Yeah, it's that that phase everyone goes through <laughs> during third year. Um, and but the uh, the 1916 the initial autopsy uh-huh. that was never really released um, didn't find any poison um, and there's you know I, th- I think that's fascinating right uh, no no poison in there now this could be some people say it could be because it evaporated before they they got to check it or it could be that he didn't ingest any poison at all yeah could not have even been a player in the in the farce yeah exactly and now. Again, with, with Rasputin sort of running the roost, making a lot of calls, changing people's jobs, determining yeah. who gets what jobs, now he starts making international enemies. Right. What was once just a problem in the household is now starting to piss off other countries, including Great Britain, Britain. who happens to have just a couple of jolly old chaps in England, uh, in Russia, keeping their finger on the pulse, as it were. As it were, MI6 and all. Bully, bully. <laughs> So, <laughs> great. Man, we're taking you guys on a trip around the world here. Yeah, exactly. With our you voices. should see how fast we're changing mustaches. <laughs> Some people say the, the wound in his forehead was from a Webley revolver, which was only uh, a British issue firearm. Now, a Webley fires unjacketed bullets, mm-hmm. and it creates a larger hole. And, and he was shot four times. <laughs> it's just all this stuff I'm thinking. I think Rasputin would say this him, about himself. <laughs> yeah! yeah. yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> da! <laughs> oh, da! 
So he was shot four times, and three of the bullets uh, fit this jacketed bullet profile that, uh, that Russian firearms used right. at the time. But this fourth one, the headshot, mm. the, the one that... The, the money. Yeah, the one that indisputably killed him very quickly, <laughs> bordering on instantaneously, was from an unjacketed uh, gun. It was an unjacketed bullet, right. which none of the Russian guns were capable of firing. Right. And so they say, all right, well, who uses unjacketed weapons? Uh, in in my sense, the, the, the British Secret Service. Yeah, British Secret Service does at the time this, this Webley uh, uh, handgun, the Webley revolver. And they say, well, were there anyone in Russia that would have those? Why, as a matter of fact, there, there was. Are, there, there are a couple chaps. Yes, a couple of bully gentlemen. <laughs> And, and and there is apparently some testimony out there from uh, a few people that were you know close to the situation, saying yeah there was a there was a plot because apparently Britain knew that this would throw <laughs> the Russian aristocracy into total chaos instead mm-hmm. of just half chaos. Right. In addition to the fact that Rasputin had actually removed some sort of pro britain yeah. um minister number, ministers uh, of the parliament right yeah and removed some of their pro britain ministers and replaced them so he was he was making he was he was f-ing up their game he was messing making their life more difficult and he's just a crazy priest that yeah. likes to have a lot of sex let's get him out of the picture right uh here's a here's a fun thing after uh, a few months after he was he was killed the uh, this isn't the fun thing. Here's this is the setup to the fun thing. Uh, the the czar and his family were uh, the the were taken by the Bolshevik Revolution. Yep. Revolutionaries took them uh, to a basement and executed all of them. Uh, which so, is so pretty. The, what, this isn't the fun. This thing? This isn't the fun thing. Oh, okay, just wanted to make sure um, we're not a sociopath. This, this was pretty pretty terrible. Because remember earlier when you got me to cheer for a rapist and then you switched it on me? I'm manipulative. I'm not an ass. Yeah. Now, now, oh, look. Here's the fun part that David Flora likes so much. <laughs> Execution. <laughs> You're a bastard. Um, <laughs> uh, they, uh, some of the, the workers dug up Rasputin's uh, body because it, it had been, uh, you know, the Tsarina wanted it buried and everything proper. Mm-hmm. They dug it up, and, and it then had, it had clawed its way halfway to the surface. <laughs> they took it to they took it out into the woods and burned it because they didn't want anything to do with it. You know, they wanted to 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 burn this devil. Apparently, though, if you don't know what you're doing, you know, during cremation, and you don't prepare a body correctly, lots of fun stuff can happen, including the body sitting up and writhing in the flames. <laughs> no, which completely horrified everybody that was watching it. How long had he been dead at that point? Um, what, a few months, probably? Apparently, if you don't sever tendons and, and the ligaments and things like that, when they when they burn, they'll constrict and make the body just do all sorts of dances. Wow! So this just added to the legend of, oh my gosh, this guy was the devil. <laughs> He's dancing in the fire even after death. If you die... And you are somehow allowed to just keep watching the earth. That's what you hope happens. You're like, I hope <laughs> yes. these jackasses burn me because... It is and I hope f- they have no idea what they're it's doing. It's going to freak them out so bad! <laughs> yeah, got them. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Where's that light I've heard about? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let, let's let's talk about just a, real quick about the name Rasputin. Uh, this was a surname. And there's a lot of uh, controversy about what it means, where it came from. A lot of people think it, it means some bad stuff, uh, as in the base Rasputni, which is licentious, which kind of fits. Yeah. Or Rasputnik, which is basically uh, dissolute. Uh, uh, that he and a lot of people are like, he was a dissolute. That's that's where why he got that name. But many people also think that it could come from Rasputia, which is uh, which means. A crossroads. Oh. And Rasputin was apparently a pretty common surname at the time. So uh, a lot of people didn't pay that much attention <laughs> to it. I think it's just hind, uh, hindsight that people are up- applying this, yeah. you know, now. He did uh, apparently foretell his own death to the Tsarina uh, in a letter to her that said... <laughs> a multi-paged letter? <laughs> it starts out... Get this. (laughs) (laughs) 
So listen up to this shit. Um, <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> he said, know that if I'm killed by my brother peasants, then you have nothing to fear. But if I'm murdered by nobles, if your relatives cause my death, then no one, not you or your children, will remain alive for more than two years. You will all be killed by the Russian people. And, and that was that was what he prophesied, and uh, it, it came true. Dwang. So that's Rasputin in a very large Russian mystic nutshell. Yep. That's better. Um, the bearded nutshell. <laughs> that's terrible. Now, I mean, going through this, uh, I, I don't think that we uh, exaggerated a lot of of the sexual exploits that he no. was purported to have had. If you look, uh, if you look up stuff, he was a fiend for this. We just sort of touched on it. Yeah. Uh, but if you if you uh, turn the gas up like ten more notches, that's that's pretty much the impression that you know uh, research gives you. On how he he was with the ladies and stuff. Yeah, yeah, not a conscientious or gentle lover, right? In fact, he his way to seduce women was to just rip open their their bodices and go to town, which is yeah, not not elegant and not cool. That would yeah, uh, the I mean I think what they just call that is rape in most parts of the world and, now, yeah, yeah, and not not really you know in his mo of using uh, the 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 Bible as a maneuvering tool. Um, <laughs> You know, that's that's the kind of trick that only works once. That the uh, you know you got to sin hard if you want to get forgiven hard. Right, right. But uh, apparently they were lining up, so he only needed to use it once. Right. Yeah. I. There are different d- depending on which uh, things you read and which uh, documentaries you watch. He is painted as uh, a very short scale of evil. Like he's either completely, totally the devil. Or he's sort of sort of devilish. He's an awful person. Or he's just like a, an old lunatic, uh, yeah. sex fiend guy. It's like it's a it, I, to me. It's a very small scale, but it's always on the bad side. Right. Yeah. No one. There's no. There's no balancing. Like no. I think that he was a misunderstood visionary who was trying right. to help the people. No. A lot of people. There are plenty of people who who do believe that he was legit and he was a good person. They were probably Wiccans. The people who think that they were probably Wiccans. That's slow. That's slow. <laughs> Still waiting for a hot Wiccan photograph. Sorry, Wiccans. <laughs> but um, we're also looking at this halfway across the world, or all the way across the world at this point, I guess. And a hundred years later, where all the propaganda has you know seeped into history and and true. All that stuff. If you go, if you go to his hometown, Pokrovsky, they they still think he's he's a big deal. He's great. Yeah. Well, he's he's. I mean, it's Siberia. There's not a lot of celebrities. So even if no matter what you do, if people remember your name, they're going to put a statue and a plaque up. Yeah. They probably have Rasputin days every April. Maybe where everybody gets drunk and has sex and yeah, you just eat cakes and then you shoot marshmallows at each other and then there's like the <laughs> They have a race where they have to swim across a river with a blanket wrapped around them. <laughs> One person draws the British card, <laughs> but it's secret. Nobody knows who has it, and you have to figure it out. Oh, man. Actually, that would be a pretty fun party. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I might have a Rasputin days. Now, here's a fun fact. Um, now, the actual date of his death is sort of loosey-goosey. Yeah. It is either listed as the 16th or... And I, I, we're usually very uh, coquettish about dating ourselves. <laughs> or the date of this recording, December 29th. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's true, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's usually, like I said, we don't like to list the date of recording. But I thought this was significant. That's that's pretty cool. I don't, I don't know what, what to think about this guy. You know, of course, I'm leaning towards, you know... Probably, probably just a dude that was that was looking to to have as much fun in life as he could through any means possible. I'm I'm leaning, I think, towards the the charlatan route because I think the things that he was purported to have predicted and and like pointing out the horse thief, he could have witnessed the guy taking the horse. You know, he could have been hidden in a barn somewhere that in in nobody knew, and he was hiding this information because he was too scared to come forward. But then he's he saw an opportunity. 
Yeah. You know, same thing with like, by this time he has to know that people hate him and he's probably going to die soon. Right. So, so to say, listen, I'm going to die, but uh, if nobles kill me, then you're all going down. Like, I think that was a pretty safe bet at that point. I don't think there was anything too mystical about his predictions. No. And I, and, and it, I don't think it even necessarily has to be as simple as either he was legit or he was a charlatan. I mean, he could have completely been a charlatan, but believed himself to be legit. Yeah. I mean, people talk themselves into all sorts of things. And if he has devoted his life to this uh, pursuit of the, the Holy Church... But he's also like, but I also want to bang a lot of chicks. Yes, yeah, so. guys. Any human being will, will will somehow find a way to stitch those things together. With and he varying, did. Yeah, he with did varying really degrees well. of success. Yeah, he happened to be really good at it. Yeah, he was never ordained as anything. He was never an actual monk or, no. or a religious figure. He was just, uh, uh, like we said, a stranic. He was a, a wandering uh, yeah. holy man he, kind of thing. He crowleyed it. He just wandered the earth and then was like, whenever he got to his new place, like, oh, you should have seen me where I just was. All yeah. these people high five me. Now I'm like a super priest. <laughs> like, that's that's his maneuver. That's you it. Know? There's, a, there's a staggering amount of, I think, uh, connections, or at least I, I don't think the two would have gotten along at all, mm-hmm. mostly because they would have fucked with each other's games. But <laughs> there, there's a lot of parallels in their lives. A and ton how they, of parallels. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's do some puns. Uh, let's get some puns going on. about it. Let's segue into some puns. Yeah. Just by slamming it in your face. <laughs> by ripping your bodice open and shoving the puns inside you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> puns, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. I've got, I'm going to start this off. Great. Uh, I've got one which, uh, is uh, a Russian anti-establishment hip hop group called Raps Putin. <laughs> and it works on a lot of levels. First of all, you know, Rasputin was, was not really beloved by the government, but this is Raps Putin. They, they can make fun of Vladimir Putin at the same time. See how it works? On I got it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Nice. It's a really, really well thought out pun. Well, I liked it because all you have to do is uh, switch two letters. Yeah. That's great. I have a marketplace for Russian junk called the Bazaar. Oh, I get it. Czar? Bazaar? Oh, oh no, Bazaar. I get it. Bazaar? All right, I got you. Bizarre, terrible. <laughs> I don't, I don't have good ones this week. Oh, really? Because Raps Putin was really burning up the charts. They might with Diggy Toots. <laughs> Diggy Toots! Oh my God, Raps Putin and Diggy Toots have to do an album together, or or at least one of those tracks featuring right, like Raps Putin and and Diggy Toots is just like oh uh, yeah, yeah, featuring Diggy Toots when he's like Raps oh, Putin, yeah. 2013, DT's up in it. <laughs> Illuminati. <laughs> what? <laughs> toot, 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 dig toots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't have a pun per se. I've got a product. Okay. And uh, this podcast was brought to you by Mama Yusupov's cyanide flavored tea cakes. You'll swear you're going to die. <laughs> I love these to death. Contains no cyanide. <laughs> They're just cyanide flavored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, I'm going to uh, dismount softly this week with... <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, actually, that's a Diggy Toots track, so you kind of own <laughs> some money. Softly. So after Planet Hollywood uh-huh. went under and everything, uh, Sylvester Stallone opened up a new restaurant called Sliberia. Oh, God. I hope that they're only open. In in northern Europe, uh, northern Asia. Yep, they're, they're, the restaurants themselves are huge, but nothing's going on. <laughs> it's always so cold yeah, in there. It's cold. There's nothing much going on. Bland food, mosquitoes. Oh. Uh, all right. So, so I feel I feel dirty like goat. Yeah, I smell like goat. I smell like goat off their puns. <laughs> Oh man! Well, please kick our asses with better puns. Please do. Please send them send them in through our website, uh, blurryphotos.org. dot mm-hmm. org. Mm-hmm. Please like us on Facebook. Yeah. Hey, why not? Uh, and follow us on Twitter. Yeah, blurry we, we, underscore photos. We're covering every media base here. We mm-hmm. are an on stop, unstoppable we'll, machine. If we're not on YouTube by the time this hot track drops, uh, then it'll it'll. 
it'll get there soon. Yeah, we'll, don't you we'll worry. get you even on 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 the YouTubes. Yeah, and then we might even put some fun videos up. That'll be awesome, right? Yeah. Uh, that's all I got for this episode. You got anything else? <clears throat> I am absolutely amazing. Just want to get that out there. I had a chance. <laughs> I had the chance myself. Well, yep. Well, that's what I wanted the world to know today. <laughs> I accuse you of being David Flora. I deny you being David Stecco. That's <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> Bye. Right. It was com- the, the 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 bullets that they used were jacketed. Were I'm sorry, were not jacketed. Not jacketed. Which is uh, completely different from any bullets that any of the Russian weapons used, which were completely unjacketed. Yeah. And uh, or jacketed. I just I'm going to say that whole thing over again. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now a Webley fires jacketed bullets. Non-jacketed. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> I might keep this. <laughs> How come I can't get the two straight? I've got it right here in front of me. Okay.